Hello everybody! In this video clip I want to show you how we can quite easily convert a 95% confidence interval into a standard deviation. So we want to find the standard deviation from a 95 confidence interval. And that is quite relevant because very often in research articles, in published papers, we will be given uh, a measurement um, plus minus the uncertainty expressed as a 95% confidence interval. So, for example, somebody measured uh, the level of uh, ATP concentrations in some samples, and this then would be given as uh, ATP concentration, and the mean of the concentration was, um, let's say, 10.0 millimolar, and the 95% confidence interval, which very often is abbreviated like that, would be between, let's say, 8.0 and 12.0 millimolar. Uh, so it would be expressed like that. And uh, very often you will also then find the sample size that was looked at, so n equals 36. And that is all the information that we get from the paper, but uh, if we want then com to compare this value uh, of ATP uh, with, let's say, a value from another paper, we would uh, actually need to have the standard deviation. And so how are we going to calculate this standard uh, deviation? Now, first of all, uh, what we know or what we can assume is that these uh, data were probably derived uh, from um, with, with some t-test or something like that. So we assume that this is relevant to continuous data. So we might have continuous data here, and a good indication is that we have got here uh, 0 0.0, so that uh, indicates if we've got decimals, we don't have any count data, we probably have some continuous data, and therefore um, uh, using uh, t values might be appropriate. Now we know that the 95% confidence interval, that these numbers here are derived from lower and upper bounds respectively. So the lower bound for uh, this measurement, so the lower bound would be 10.0 millimolar minus the margin of error and that gives us 8.0 millimolar and the upper bound, the upper bound is 10.0 millimolar plus the margin of error. And that gives us 12.0 millimolar. And uh, basically uh, what we can write in this case is that we have our value, this x bar, plus minus the margin of error. And that's sometimes how it is also expressed. Um, now, how do we find this margin of error? Well, we just simply take one of uh, these, um, these values, lower bound or upper bound, it doesn't matter which one, and uh, calculate the margin of error. So if I just simply take the upper bound, the margin of error in this case would be 12.0 millimolar minus 10 millimolar, so that would be 2.0 millimolar. So that's the margin of error, and sometimes we also find our result then expressed as 10.0 uh, millimolar plus minus 2.0 millimolar. And it's always important to check then in the research paper what they actually mean by that. Do they mean the margin of error 
or have they already used the standard deviation? If that is already the standard deviation, then we, uh, we don't have to do anything. But very often it is not, and very often we don't even have this information, we just have this 95% confidence interval. So, okay, we've got the margin of error, and we know that uh, if that follows a t-distribution, then we have the equation, the margin of error equals a critical t-value, and I abbreviate that with t crit, times the sample standard deviation, and that's what we are interested in, divided by the square root of the sample size. Uh, so what we really want to know is this standard deviation. So all we need to do is rearrange this equation, and we get s standard deviation equals the margin of error, times the square root of the sample size divided by the t critical value. Now we just calculated the margin of error. We also know the sample size n. Now we need to really think about what is the critical value uh, for that and how do we find that. And luckily uh, we can use uh, tables or we can even use Excel to find the critical value. And here the critical value, t crit, is given as, and uh, Excel has a function for that. This function is t dot i n v dot 2t. That means it is trying to find the critical value for a two-tailed t-test. And here we put in, and it asks for two arguments. It asks for the probability, probability, and it also asks for the uh, degrees of freedom that we have here. Now, our probability, the probability in this case, is 1 minus the uh, confidence interval, 1 minus ci. So in this case, it would be 1 minus 0 0.95, or if we calculate that, that would be 0 0.05. And the degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom are given by the sample size minus 1 in this case. So we can calculate t crit, the critical t value, that would be t dot in dot 2t of 0 0.05 and we had a t-value, uh, we had a sample size of 36, so the degrees of freedom are 35, so we would put that into Excel, and uh, I have done this calculation already, so we get a critical value of 2.03. If we don't know um, the... Uh, degrees of uh, freedom, then uh, it's, it would be very difficult to do any calculation. So we really rely on the sample size to be given in this research paper. And now we can very easily calculate this s. s equals the margin of error that we just calculated, so that's uh, 2.0 times the square root of the sample size, so that was 36, divided by 2.03. And if we do that, then our uh, sample standard deviation is pretty close to, to 6. I think it is uh, 5 point, so it's around 6. Um, I think it is 5.95 uh, or something like that, but I just round it up to a uh, standard deviation of 6. And that is basically how we can calculate the standard deviation 
uh, from a 95% confidence interval. I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.